Explain like I'm five. How is it possible for computer chips to have billions of transistors? Aren't transistors physical things? How is it possible to manufacture billions? Especially within the small size of a computer chip? I saw the Apple M2 chip has 20 billion transistors. It just seems incomprehensible that that many can be manufactured. They could be microscopic. But 20 billion is still an absurd number. I've always had the opinion that our transistors are centuries ahead of where we have any right to be as a civilization. Like if an alien spacecraft surveyed us, they'd be like, WTF, these guys are still burning coal, but they have nanometer scale transistors? It's like we mainlined all our skill points into one category. Answer similar to how a book can have a million letters. Transistors aren't physical things created and attached to, to the chip. They are printed on the chip. It takes many layers. Special light. And complicated chemicals. But it is quite like printing. Keep in mind that they aren't in one line. A square of them makes it much much easier to have so many. A square of 20 billion means a side length of approximately 150,000 transistors. Taking a distance of 15 nanometers Apple uses 5 nanometers. But adding extra for redundancy and variation gives us a side length of 2 millimeters. This is really quite small still. The transistors on a chip look nothing like the transistors you can see with your eyes. Using lasers and chemical processes they make tiny parts of the chip behave like transistors. Then using even more complicated processes they'll connect them with different layers of conductive insulating material. Modern CPUs also have multiple layers of transistors. But then you run into the problem of dissipating heat from those middle layers. Transistors used to be an actual thing. If you took the back off a 1970s transistor radio you could count them. Eat one was about the size of a Q-tip. Then we figured out how to make the functional equivalent of transistors by etching patterns into layers of silicon. Since then we've gotten very good at doing that at microscopic sizes. So I might argue that a modern chip doesn't contain transistors. But it contains millions of transistor equivalent silicon circuits. It's possible because they are not individually manufactured. Think of it like spray painting with a stencil. If you put a stencil down of the letter A and spray paint over it you get one A. You could also make a stencil with 100 A's on it and that same single spray will now get you 100 A's. We basically make transistors with very detailed stencils. Spraying light and chemicals through them. As we get better at making really detailed stencils we get more transistors per spray basically for free. They are essentially printed. They're not assembled mechanically. A silicon wafer has a large block of silicon circuits projected onto it and developed with special chemicals in extremely complicated and expensive photolithography machines. The wafer then contains a mass number of completed chips, some of which may be defective. They break the wafer up into individual chips to be sold and sell the defective chips as lower powered units by disabling defective areas of the chip. Transistors are so small that they only measure a handful of atoms in size. Also they are not placed on the chip like with traditional electronics. The chips themselves are made from the transistor material and the individual transistors are created directly on it by a laser. Linus Tech Tips have a video when they visit an Intel building. You might want to check it out it shows how some machines can't even be touched because a single movement will disrupt everything and damage the CPU. It's insane. Really. But really interesting at the same time. Transistors are small. Like really really small. And they get smaller every couple of years this is called Moore's Law. Right now you might have heard about Intel's new 2 nanometers wafer that means they got the size of these. 
transistors down to 2 nanometers on a 2 centimeters chip that's already 10 million times that size. Now these chips are built in layers too. They are not just flat structures but many layers stacked on top. Each layer is really just a couple of atoms thick. It is amazing. But wait till you see where AI takes us in the next 50 years. Progress will be more than exponential. They etch the traces and into the silicon with light. Then they can make a giant version of the processor. Kind of like a massive photo negative. And use lenses to project a much smaller version of it on the silicon. They then fill these voids with whatever material is needed for a type of component and grind the excess off the top. They repeat this process for each type of material until you have all the components of a transistor. The completely simple and direct answer to your question because they are very small. A little more detail to the answer they are not produced individually and then put on a print board. They are produced in large batches on wafer. They print the circuits with patterns. They shine light through partly transparent film. The light makes chemical changes. They wash it with more chemicals. Stuff happens where the light shine. More transistors is just smaller patterns. And they've gotten crazy small. If the right chemicals match up in the same place it makes a transistor. They don't make each transistor separately like on an assembly line. The first transistor was made by a guy sticking two pieces of silicon or germanium under the microscope. Nowadays the computer chips transistors are laid using a programming language. To control the computer chip, there is a program microcode built into it. The program microcode runs another program BIOS. Runs another program Windows. Imagine you have layers of paper in different colors. You then use a powerful laser to etch a pattern into the top layer. You then remove the paper and all the burned bits stay because it was burned into the system. Then you etch the next layer of different color in another pattern. Rinse and repeat. The different colors are basically different metals and materials. And they just use light laser to physically shape the material so it can behave like a transistor. Since light can be extremely small, it's how they're able to get so many transistors in such a small space. The transistors are not made one at a time. They're made by essentially photocopying a master pattern onto a silicon wafer. And then using the pattern on the wafer to spray it with the dew pants and other materials needed to turn silicon into transistors. The master pattern has all of the billions of transistors on it. And they spray the whole wafer at once instead of spraying each individual transistor one at a time. Then you repeat the process to physically etch the silicon into the shape you want and apply the films and metals that need to be connected to the silicon transistor. Wait until OP finds out how many cells a human body has. And then how many more bacterial cells live in the human body. If I'm not mistaken, a transistor is just a couple of small lines next to each other in a certain configuration with each line being made from a certain material. These materials in this configuration will behave like a transistor would behave when you apply electrical current. That is apply current to one line. And current flows through the other two lines. Just make the lines smaller and voila. But this would mean less current can go through. So there's a limit. To put it bluntly, they are small. Very small. Almost incomprehensibly small. A modern transistor is only a couple of tens of atoms wide. Our transistors are so small that gamma rays from the sun are capable of meaningfully affecting them. Flipping their state and causing bit flips in machinery that regularly cause problems for satellites. And even things right here on Earth. 